It's one of those things that I've considered selling the car for. Quite unforgivable from Porsche. So annoying, so annoying. Monumentally, horrifically bad about this vehicle. Ah! So I've owned my Porsche Macan now for about six months. It's my daily driver. 90% of the time, I absolutely love this car. But 10% of the time, well, those are the things that I really, really hate. And those are the things I'm gonna share with you in this video. There are eight things in total. And the final two things in this video, I believe are absolutely monumental, monumental ups by Porsche. They really should be embarrassed. So make sure you stick around. So we're counting down from eight to one. And the first thing I'm gonna tell you is the fact that this car is really quite jerky in first and second gear when doing slow speeds. It happens when I'm kind of pulling up to a junction and coming to a complete stop, or when I'm from a complete stop and I'm starting gradually to move forward. When you're coming to a stop, it almost comes to a stop and then it catapults you forward, which is really quite a strange sensation. Quite uncomfortable at times because you constantly know that this little jerk is coming any moment. I do need to investigate that further because I'm not sure if that's just the characteristic of these vehicles or there's a bigger problem at foot here. I do have a warranty on the vehicle, so if there was to be any sort of issue there, when well, hopefully I'd be covered with the warranty. Currently, doesn't make the driving experience that good. Now this next one's more of an annoyance because I'm gonna lock the car and then fold the wing mirrors. 90% of the time, what I'll find is that the driver's side wing mirror does actually fold in, but the passenger one does not fold in. And I'm gonna try that. To do that, you need to lock the car, press it once and then kept, keep it, hold it held in. Uh, so I'll press it once, then hold it in. And there we see it happen here. The driver's side has folded in, the passengers had stayed out. And what I'll do is I'll reset this. So that mirror is now folded out and you'll probably find that on the second time it works fine. There we go, both mirrors have folded this time. One of those really, really annoying things. Next up is the memory settings for the radio system. It doesn't remember where it previously was in certain situations. So let's say, for example, I've got the DAB digital radio on right now, okay? I've got the DAB screens set up with my personal settings, my personal uh, auto stores, if you like. What would then happen if I was to connect my Bluetooth phone to the system so I could play some songs from my phone and then disconnect the BT, it doesn't automatically go back to the screen that I was on. It doesn't go back to the DAB. It goes back to some crappy normal air band or FM radio system which I haven't even got tuned in. So it, and it, every time I essentially connect my phone and then my phone disconnects, I then have to go through the whole rigmarole of going into source, going back to DAB, and then I'll get my radio stations come back up. Um, I just wish it would remember where it was when it left off before you go into the Bluetooth setting, as opposed to having to then go back in every time and uh, set everything up again every time you get in the vehicle. Oh, bloody typical that the rain started. So the next thing is that it's actually quite uncomfortable for me getting in and out of this car. You'll see that the, uh, the seats, the side bolsters on these seats, they are really quite high and they stick up quite a lot. It's very good when you're driving on country roads and you're going around corners because it keeps you in its place. But for me, I kind of have bad hamstrings. So every time I get out, this side bolster here has to rub against my hamstring. And then when you're getting out, it kind of digs into the back of your hamstring, the back of your leg. Obviously the only place your leg can go is down so it really is quite uncomfortable it's one of those things that i've considered selling the car for because if you if you're going to be uncomfortable getting in and out of the vehicle then it may well not be the right vehicle for you so it is something for me to consider moving forward next up is the rear leg room not that i'll be sitting in the back of this car very often but i just don't think it's very good i'm five foot ten and this is the normal sort of seating position for the uh, the passenger of the car so if you've got like a six footer or you've got a group of adults i think you're probably going to struggle in the back of here it's obviously better suited for kids you could squeeze adults in at a push but it may well be a little bit cramped in the back so one of the next things that i hate about this is the sat nav or the crap nav as i like to call it because there are a few things wrong with this uh, the first thing is that the when you put in a destination the nav itself is just so slow to respond um, you could there have been times when i've missed junctions because the screen just isn't updating at all 
the graphics on the screen are just really really poor I've seen a lot better graphic systems in older vehicles so I think Porsche always just been a few years behind with their sat nav systems but the very fact that when you're trying to zoom in and out of the maps again it just takes such a long time so that is the first part of the crab nav that I don't like the second part is the fact that when I've got the sat nav on and I've got a destination and I'm trying to navigate somewhere the automatic default is for the uh, for the map to be on one side of the screen and for the instructions to be on the other side of the screen. Well, I don't like that. I like the map to be on the full screen. But unfortunately, every time you go in to start a new uh, sort of route or destination, you have to physically go in and set that up every time. So it doesn't remember the fact that I want a map every time I'm navigating somewhere. So I have to go into the option, option, set map, and then I have to go to map layout and then full screen every single time, which is really quite annoying. Okay, so I mentioned that there were two things which were just monumentally, horrifically bad about this vehicle. And I'm gonna go on to those now. The first of those being the fact that when driving the car with or without any music on, there were so many horrible, and I mean horrible, vibrations, rattles coming from the door cards, coming from a little bit of the dashboard, both door cards in fact, and also the panel on the side of the seats. Now, unfortunately it does mean that I'm gonna have to take apart these door cards. You, you won't be able to pick it up as I'm speaking to you right now, but I can hear the rattles and the vibrations going on, and we're on quite a smoothish road in fact. So I think it's honestly just so unforgivable that these cars are made like this. And it's not just the Macan because I've had problems with my 997, I've had problems with my 991, and I've had a lot of other people who've also mentioned the same thing. So it's just one of those things that I really, really cannot abide in a vehicle. And honestly, it, at times it's made me think, I can't be bothered with this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell the vehicle, but I've kind of talked myself out of it and talked myself into just spending a bit of time taking the door cards off with that, like I've done with other cars, and hopefully I'll be able to get to the bottom of the vibrations on these cards. But I constantly find myself like banging the door cards in an attempt to stop some of the rattles and vibrations. So annoying, so annoying. And the next thing which is monumentally bad and I hate about this car and is quite unforgivable from Porsche is the viewpoint from which I have from my seat. When I'm driving along, I've got a very good view of the road in fact, but it's the fact that when I'm looking at my speed or my instrument clusters, I can only see the bottom three quarters. So the top quarter or the top third is completely cut off by the top of the steering wheel. Now I've got my seat in the highest possible position. I've got the steering wheel in the highest possible position. So I, there's nothing I can do with the steering wheel that can adjust my view. It just unfortunately means that when you've got your seat as high up as I have, and when you've got the steering wheel as high up as possible, you're gonna lose some visibility for the top of the, uh, the instrument clusters. So it means I do have to like move myself quite a bit in order to see those things. Look, I get that it's not gonna change the performance of the vehicle, but you know, they are there for me to look at and I do want to be able to see them. I'm five foot ten, so God help anybody who wants their seat in the high position and they're say six foot or something, because they're gonna see, they're gonna have a lot of issues seeing the uh, the clusters there. Unforgivable in my opinion. Why couldn't Porsche develop the steering wheel which has more vertical uh, up and down movement? All right, guys, I'm going to end this video right here because the rain really is starting to come down now and it's getting really quite cold. Um, if you want to see more videos on this Porsche Macan, then please make sure to hit that subscribe button. I will be doing more videos on this very channel very soon. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, if you took something out of it, make sure to hit that like button. You can also follow me on Instagram. It's at Porsche House underscore. I'll see you there. Take care. Dude, I really like this car.